recording in progress. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Sh at short notice on a Thursday night as opposed to Monday. Mondays seem to have more people. More people are able to make Mondays. So we're gonna we're gonna keep trying to do it Monday. Just this Monday we're on a one of our mass migrations. So uh, yeah, no, thank you very much. There's somebody else trying to join and they keep clicking on and clicking off. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. But welcome. Welcome to Freedom Thinking Community Group. Uh, Thursday night. Ali's just coming in. Thursday, Thursday the 29th of September. Bloody hell. It's Lewis' birthday tomorrow. I didn't send a Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, we're such bad uncles and aunties. Yeah. So welcome, yeah. Um, everybody's well, it appears. Hey, about. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us at such late no late notice. Um, do you want to say anything? Do you want to start? Um, I was trying to, I, earlier on, I was in town, walking around with her in the sling and chatting away to her, and I was having all these ideas for groups. And then uh, it'll run out of my head. But I think what I put on one of the groups is about if people are curious about what we do to join us. And the reason I put that was because there's a photo we've taken of Lucia and she just, she's got like the best curious face you could do. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's something that I've noticed in myself since coming across the principles is you start getting way more curious about life and stop thinking you know everything. Um, so I thought it would be nice if we could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But again, I think uh, I moved away from um, always having topics and stuff because all of the topics are always going to be a byproduct. They're always going to be something that you see after the fact. And what the principles are trying to point us to to warn is more what what's created, like what is creating, what is creating, what is creating, and that's the bit that. I feel has more magic. That's the bigger perspective. That's zooming out. Whereas all these other little things, they're amazing. Like I love that I'm more curious about life now, but I know that that's not what the principles are pointing to. It's an implication or an after the fact of an understanding. And the principles in themselves are so simple, but so deep. And it's almost the more that we see. My turn to take her away for a little bit. Ah. The more that we see, it's like the less content there is for them. Like I used to do three day events and think, my goodness, I've got so much to share. There's so much to, to teach. How on earth am I going to fit it in? Is her book down there? No. Um, how am I going to fit it all into three days? Now, when we have a three or four day event, I'm like, wow, we've got all this space. What are we going to share? What's going to come up? And I think it's a really, it's a different, um, it's a different come from with it. That there, it isn't about learning more and taking on more knowledge. It's about stripping away, stripping away, stripping away. What gets in the way of us being what we really are, being present, being loving being still. What are the beliefs that get in the way of us experiencing our nature? And I think when we start to zoom out and go big picture, like there's this intelligent that, intelligence that creates, we are that intelligence. We are that buzzing light, love force with the ability to create. And it creates all this stuff. And it seems to create mayhem and madness and beauty and love and joy and all of the things. But none of those things in themselves are what we are. And I was laying in bed last night. She came in about quarter past one in the morning for more milk. And it was just blowing my mind that she's pretty much doubled in size since she was born. I think more than doubled in size in under six months. And that's all from milk. Like my body's intelligence the intelligence that lives in my body has done that. And that same deep intelligence, I don't know, I feel like I've got such a respect for it when it comes to my body, 
and I don't have it as much for my mind. I kind of think I know a bit better and I want to hold on to things. And there's certain areas I think I need to let go of. And like you can see as soon as we get heady and as soon as we get into the form of it, we, as soon as we get into the content, there's always going to be discomfort and wanting more of or less of. And there is a space in which I think we do embrace. And I think Kelly will know a lot about this in terms of um, Buddhism. I love some of the um, meditations and I kind of see them as a metaphor for, for the mind. And one of the ones we used to do was Metta Bahavna. So I think it's about creating love and kindness. And you'd have to think love and kindness for yourself and then for uh, a good friend, then like a neutral person, someone you find difficult and then for the world. And I used to love that one because so often my mind would just be wandering and wandering and wandering. And then suddenly like you kind of get a feel for what it was pointing to. And my mind wouldn't wander as much and it would stay with that creating this feeling within of love and kindness. And it, it, it is like a vibration. And I know there's been times where I've struggled with someone or there's something, there's been a disagreement that's happened and they've been my dis difficult person. And so often without even a conversation, it's like doing that every few, every night I used to do it sometimes, something would shift. And I think we're so much more than we think we are. There's so much more to us than we give ourselves credit for. And life is easier than we think i was talking to a teenager earlier who has just absolutely smashed her gcse's like a stars and a star stars and in all these pretty difficult subjects she's now doing the a level she wanted um and i said to her because she struggles with eating disorders and i said to her if you could wave a magic wand and 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 create the life that you want to live? What would need to change? What needs to change in your life for you to have what you think you want, what you think this perfect life is? And it's like, pretty much completely change what I look like, change my figure, change my face, change everything. I keep the intelligence, but I would change everything else. And I said to, did it ever occur to you that your idea that you're not right, you're not beautiful, that you're not, is a thought. Did it ever occur to you that that actually isn't who you are? Like you've created this idea of this perfection and you're matching yourself against it and you don't match up. And she just said, no, I've never considered that. And cause she's an actress, I was saying, you've created a character and this role is not for you. This role is really not for you. It's a miserable role. It doesn't allow you to enjoy life. And she said, well, and she'd said it to me once before when I spoke to her. I need to sack myself, don't I? And I said, yeah. I said, you're the only one that can do that. I can't do that for you. But you're so wedded to what you think you know and what you think life is. You don't allow anything fresh to come in. And I said, have you ever considered it? And she said, maybe in moments. And I said, well, when you were a kid, did you care about your physique or what you look like or... Did you used to enjoy life when you were, when you were younger? And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, this has all started in my teenage, teenage years. And I said, but there's nothing really that's changed apart from your mind, a belief. And it looks fixed, but it's not. Because thought isn't anything solid. And that was when we started talking about curiosity. Like, I'm curious to see, what do you think would be helpful for your life? I'm curious to see if you would be open to considering for a moment that you're not right. Like, I know you like to be right. Like she loves to be right with all of her subjects and that what if you were wrong when it came to some of the things you think about yourself and some of your beliefs? And she kind of smiled and actually I was, the only reason she's speaking to me, we only do half an hour sessions is because she loves babies. So I'm always like, oh yeah, Lucille will be on the call with me. And Lucille always sits there and does ridiculously cute things and coos at her and smiles at her and then feeds for a bit. And I was saying like, if you look at her, there is no concept within her yet, like in comparison of better and worse and all those things. And look how much 
like she generally seems to have a a movement towards joy and laughter and doesn't take life too seriously like I was trying to bite I, I cut her finger when I was clipping them a few weeks ago which made her cry and it made me cry probably made me cry more so I'm scared she's now clippers now so I've been doing the chewing it thing so then earlier on I was chewing her now and I was like to spit it out and she just started she threw her head back and just started cracking up so then I pretended to do it over and over again and she's just cracking up at this small little thing and then it'll get to the point where she's like mm, you know that's not funny anymore but I think life isn't serious and she's so interested and curious next moment next moment next moment and it's been the, she's been the best teacher for me I've had some amazing teachers in the principles but she's been my best teacher because she's just present the dogs had a fight yesterday and like she's a really scared face like totally like She's never seen them really do that before. And then she was a bit upset for a moment and then she's into the next moment. We we're in the kitchen doing something else. She had a few little, um, she woke up pretty much every hour last night. With, um, oh, it's like she has little nightmares. So I don't know if there is things because I know I dream about things that I've seen sometimes. But she's woken up today in a beautiful mood and is just on with life again. Laughing at the dogs, watching them. And I think how much well, consider it. How much of our pain, upset, disappointment come from us? I think I heard Dave talking to someone earlier and it's like, that would be 100%. Regardless of circumstance, regardless of past, there isn't anything that creates our experience of life other than our own mind. And I think some people find that really hard. We've just worked with a couple who really struggled with that. They wanted to go through their past, what they've done to each other and how abusive one's been and what the other one said. And a whole three quarters of a day went on that. We're just like, at one point, Dave's like, take Lucia out. We'll, uh, we'll let them kind of thrash this out without her having to be around it. And they really think that by looking at that, somehow we were going to help them find peace. So in the end, I think they've got pretty straight with them. Like this is, it's a waste of time talking about this stuff. There is no happiness found in looking at what's wrong with us or life or looking back, holding grudges, judging, comparison. Like there is no happiness and peace to be found there. I think someone put it out the other day. Um, I don't know if it was on Facebook or someone texted me, but expecting to find happiness by looking through the crap of the past is like expecting to get dry getting in the shower something like this paraphrasing some terrible remembering quotes but it's that same insanity if we want to get dry do we go and stand under a shower it doesn't work and it was actually pretty cool because the next day with this couple were like how did you feel yesterday they're like shit we felt absolutely shit how did you feel afterward at <laughs> that day of you two just throwing stuff at each other yeah interesting isn't it that's what the mind creates the day before we'd all gone off and had done a little bit of sightseeing together and we'd had a really nice day and they actually were getting on all right but when they sat down and focused on what they thought was wrong with their relationship they experienced it 3d full as if it was happening now and some of the stuff was like 20 years before and it is that simple like if you come back to this moment with an open mind. In the same way in the Metapahavan, you can experience your mind wandering off and then you come back to what your, your role is in it, creating love and kindness, developing love and kindness. And I messaged the, the couple afterwards and just said, when my niece was going through her um, hard time, the only thing that helped bring her out of that was love and kindness. Even when she was behaving in awful ways and saying awful things. And if anyone in that situation had taken what she said as truth or personally, that would have, you know, it would have been heartbreaking. But you just saw someone totally lost. All they needed was love and kindness. It's always going to come back to love. And that's why I thought it's hilarious about Rusty's poo that Dave showed me just before the call, because even the shit's made of love. 
it's it's what it's made of it's what we're built from but i think we're so often so many of us are so caught up in what we think we know and how we think life is and how hard it is or certain characteristics of us that we think are difficult or had them a long time or we miss the moment like I think I said it on one of the groups a few weeks ago so much of the thinking I used to do before having Lucia has just vanished and I haven't done anything and it's stuff that's haunted me since very young I'm walking around town singing a lullabies to get her to sleep and chatting away to her and I, I used to be so shy and like I was saying today, we're in the supermarket. He's like, oh my God, she's done a massive poo. I was like, I'll take her. He goes, no, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Because he quite likes changing a nappy because she loves laying on her back and chatting to you. And I got chatting to the, the guy in Sainsbury's. And I said to Dave, oh, you'd have been so proud of me. I had like a full blown conversation with the checkout person. And he just laughed because normally I kind of step back and he he's the one that does that because he wasn't there. And it's since having her for whatever reason, so much of my focus has been on her. And it's interesting, her name's Lucia, it means light. It says, Dave, it's like my focus is on the light. And through that, so much of the darkness that I used to look at and think about has completely fallen away. And there are things that I've tried to change through my understanding of the principles. And I don't think it matters how many times we hear, you can't change the mind by thinking more. The mind changes on its own. Life changes through insight. And we have insight continually throughout the day. And I've just written Dave. Yeah. She probably does want food now. Oh, does she? Yeah. But they were the things that kind of came to me as I was wandering around town singing lullabies about group is taking it back to simplicity and knowing that curiosity is something that happens through understanding but not it isn't the thing because there's so many posts now about well, get just get curious just become like a child just do this and we make it a doing again it, it isn't a doing it's when our mind shifts and focuses on something else we get a new experience but we spend our time looking at what we don't like wanting it to change and it doesn't work that way in the same way that getting in the shower to get dry doesn't work you've been listening to what we've been talking about a little bit and then i went downstairs because i thought i had a little bit of time and i, I went and made myself some yogurt <laughs> i haven't had a chance to eat it what are you talking about uh, Julie, what have we been talking about? I've done all the talking. You can't put me on the spot. I was laughing at, I was laughing at Dave for thinking with his stomach. <laughs> 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 oh. I look stupid loud. Huh? Yeah, I got, I got the gist of what you were talking about. Does anybody want to say anything? Hi, Andrew, and hi, Mel. I've just joined. And hi, 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 Deb. And hi, Deb. Hi, hope you're okay. Hi, we're good, thank you, love. Good. I had a lovely conversation with Huey this morning. And we spoke about... Spoke about all kinds of things. You know... Really, when you boil the whole shebang down, all anybody's ever really looking for is to feel all right. That's it. That's all we want. We just want to feel all right. We just want to feel comfortable in our own skin. Peace. We want, we want joy and we want happiness for ourselves. And we want it for other people as well. We all want a different world. But our search for this has always been a, a misguided attempt.
Huey asked me, he said, what did you do? What happened? Tell me about before and then tell me about after your experience that changed your life, Dave. I said, well, before, life was very difficult. I was deeply unhappy with myself. I wasn't really good enough. I'm probably making some of this up now, Huey, so forgive me. But as it's coming to me now, I wasn't really good enough. I wasn't big enough. One of my mates once said to me, he said, you're not really one of the lads, are you? I really wanted to be one of the lads. And somebody who I loved told me I wasn't one of the lads. Not really one of the lads. But I want you to be one of the lads. I'm not good enough. Now, I wasn't quite as quick-witted as some of those funny lads. You didn't have your B vitamins. I didn't have my B vitamins, had I? No. And so my, my life was one that, you know, I've never really been good enough. And he's like, well, then Huey said, well, what was, what was your experience like? Well, I can tell you about the experience, but it doesn't really matter. Because it was my experience. And you can't have it. My experience of awakening <clears throat> was something I can't talk about, not because it's a secret, but because it's impossible. But it's the message that, that's carried with it that's important for my life. And it's a message that's important for everybody's lives. Because life isn't how it appears. Life isn't what it seems. It's something we all take very, very seriously. And we take ourselves very, very seriously. And we take this world very, very seriously. When in actual fact, it's an illusion. We think it's solid. We think it's fixed. We think time change takes time, if it is, if it is at all possible. I heard Jenny speaking about the intelligence behind her body, an intelligence that she, her ego as Jenny, does not, does not give to the body. I always remember listening to a man called um, Keith Blevins. And Keith... Sydney Banks asked Keith, he said, Keith, what do you think this universe is? And Keith said he was so glad he kept his gob shut because at the time he was thinking, well, it's galaxies and solar systems and this and that. And But he knew fine well that wasn't going to be good enough for Sid. That wasn't going to be anything close to what Sid spoke about. And so Keith just said, I don't know. I don't know, Sid. And Keith and Sid said, pure intelligence no no hunk of knowledge hunk of knowledge was hunk of knowledge my apologies hunk of knowledge a hunk of knowledge one of the ways our conversation here and i's conversation went this morning was it's all thought because Huey said to me he said you know i get the gist of the principles I said yeah i don't He said, yeah, you know, thought, thought, you know, you feel what you think. No, go deeper than that. Go beyond that. Yes, it's true. Feelings are an absolute direct correlation to what's going on within the mind. Correct. Go deeper. Don't stop there. Everything is thought. This whole universe is thought. This whole universe is consciousness. Everything is a thought of the divine. Whether people like the idea or not, it does not care what people think. Because it is them.
everything and everybody is exactly where they are meant to be right now. And they are exactly who they are supposed to be and how they are supposed to be. They're all perfect. Everybody on earth is so perfect. They couldn't possibly understand it. Everybody is the divine having an experience. This universe that we see is the manifestation. It's too late. And we're always studying the too late to try and understand it. That includes our own thoughts and feelings. The studying of thoughts is too late. The studying of beliefs is too late. This is why people never find peace when they start doing this. We've tried to death the looking back in the past scenario to try and find happiness and joy now. Done that to death. We've done it for decades. And it's created victims. Because the answer doesn't lie there. It doesn't lie in time. Because time doesn't exist. Time's an illusion of thought. Time exists within thought. Thought does not exist within time. Thought is the eternal now. The now has got nothing to do with time. Because time doesn't exist. The now is the space from which everything emerges, comes into existence. That's why when you align yourself with the now, you align yourself with the divine creator because you align yourself with what is. That's why it's such a powerful space to be in and that's why so many people have written books about it when they've had revelations about the now. It's nothing to do with time. It's not the, it's not the point from which the future becomes the past or the past becomes the future. It's not a crossroads. It's the whole of existence. nothing to do with time the now is the divine creative space it's all that exists if you really look at why we suffer and really look at it, you'll see it's always going to be based in time a future or a past It's always based in the illusion. What is the past? Where is the past? Where on earth is the past? Uh, when I used to think about this, I'd go, but I've got photographs of when I was a kid. And what about castles? And what about castles? They're totally from the past. Of course the past exists. No, the photographs exist in the state that they exist in the very now. And the castles exist in the state that they exist in in the very now. There is only that that exists. It doesn't mean things haven't happened. Things have happened. Things have definitely happened but they are now memories. Memories are thoughts. Those thoughts only have the amount of power that we grant them because they're thoughts. Thoughts in and of themselves have no power. Only the depth to which we believe and agree with them. Every single thought is made of exactly the same stuff. Like, I don't know if anybody can see Julie and her background image, which is the rolling sea. The sea never changes. It's the space from which all the waves emerge. But every single wave that looks like an individualized wave is water. 
there's big waves coming in in that picture and there's little waves coming in that picture. But they're all made of water. Hey, up, Dan. They're all made of water. I remember Paul's not on the moment, but Mackey, Paul Mackey, started coming to these community groups. He started coming because one day. He's going to be, actually. Is it? Yeah. He said, well, he logged on last night. Oh, did he? Yeah. On Wednesday? He thought he got it the wrong day and then yeah. he said he'd be here today. Idiot. And, um, but we wrote on this board, not knowing that he'd attempted suicide two weeks before coming to the art. It was an online retreat that we were doing. Didn't even want to be there. He was only doing it to appease his girlfriend. We wrote, the suicide thought is made of exactly the same stuff as what flavour yoghurt do you want? The thought of suicide that we take very, very seriously and we go and seek help and we people kind of crowd around us and start flapping about is made of exactly the same stuff as what flavour yoghurt do I want? We get so caught up in the detail, in the details of our mind. That little saying, the devil is in the details. <clears throat> Couldn't be more true. Suffering exists when we start examining ourselves, because the moment we start examining ourselves, we're taking ourselves far too seriously and we're not serious. It's not a serious thing. We never were a serious thing. We are a thing of love. We are divine, creative love. How can you know that, Dave? How can you just say that? Two reasons. One, I've experienced it. I'm lucky enough to have experienced it. And it blew me apart. It blew my heart wide open. And I knew I wanted that in my life. In my incarnation, in my, in my illusion. And two, because it's logical. When you really look at it, love being the creative substance is a logic. Love is the unification of all things. Unification, singular, one. When two people fall in love, they unify, they become a unit. See you, Elise. They become a unit. When people unite, one, uni, one. See you, Kate. Thanks for joining us. She'll be back. She can be back. She'll cool. be back. And then you look at the word universe, one verse, uni, one. Love is the thing that adheres societies together. Love is the thing that adheres relationships together. It's like the adhesive, it's what... It's what allows the world to work in total perfection throughout all the biome. Now, I'm not talking about individualized, personalized love because people then go, yeah, but what about, you know, rabbits getting killed there by foxes? That's not very kind. Yeah, but there's more rabbits than there is foxes. There's more grass than there is rabbits. Nature favors everything and everyone alike, all at the same time. Love is the thing we're all searching for, but we've always searched for it outside of ourselves, in people, in finances, in circumstance, in experiences. We never found it. Or if we did, it was a fleeting glimpse. And then we got addicted to that. And the magic was lost because we believed it was outside of ourself. 
Now, this love that I'm talking about will heal a body in a moment. It will heal a mind in a moment. It will heal a soul in a moment. And all it is is a simple recognition of ourself. Because the only thing that suffers is ego. What is ego? Ego is the opposite. It's everything that we divide up. It's when we take the universe and we split it into pieces and we go, there's you, there's me, there's this, there's that. Over here, over there, up and down, wet and dry, light and dark, blah, 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 blah. Good and bad, right and wrong. Evil and just. And in actual fact, none of that really exists. As thoughts, as ideas, what I believe is right and just is very different to many other people. It's my idea, just like it's their idea. My reality is not true. My reality is no more true than anybody else's reality. But we keep on getting mesmerized by reality. We're so caught up in the details of reality that we don't stop for a moment to ponder and ask the question, where's it all coming from? What is reality? What am I? What is life? What is life? What is this animating energy? What is energy? What are these words we just spit out left, right and centre thinking we know something? Study it and you'll realise you don't know any of it. Then, as I said to Huey, you start to enter the kingdom that Jesus spoke about. To enter the kingdom, you must become like the child. What are children? They're people who don't think they know everything. And Kelly. The children, she sees everything as though it's the first time she's ever seen it. Her little mouth goes. And she starts to coordinate her hands to get hold of it so she can see what it tastes like. She's mesmerised by it all. And we look at it and go, it's a book, it's a book. What's a book? Everything starts with thought. And it ends with thought. The infinite creative force of the universe. It thought me up. It thought us up. We are an idea of the universe. Not the created universe, but that that creates the universe. Everybody and everything is so beautifully orchestrated. It's perfect. Everybody's perfect. Because there's only it. Everything is made out of itself. It makes everything out of itself. This divine, loving space, consciousness, energy makes everything out of itself. It dreams everything into existence. And it animates and it dreams itself as a reality and every single one of us is an aspect of it we're all one that's what all one is we're all that love we're all that love playing the game of life in varying states of lostness It's not, it doesn't require a body. 
to have an experience. It can free itself from a body in a moment. And it absolutely will for every single one of us. And it has done to some of us already. Someone, I know some on this screen have had glimpses of experiences beyond the body. What we are is truly miraculous and magical and mystical. Life is mystical. Life is the spiritual. The very spiritual thing that everybody is looking for is themselves. Thought. A spiritual principle. Why is it a spiritual principle? Because it exists for all beings and all things. It's not a man, it's not a <clears throat> it's not a manifestation of the brain. As scientists, many scientists believe, not all scientists, but many scientists believe. You want proof of that? Look at the trees, look at the plants. They're conscious thinking beings. They know fine well in the UK right now, it's turning into autumn. They've put out the fruit. They're getting ready for winter. When spring comes, they will totally be aware of it. They are consciousness. They have an experience of reality, each and every one. Because that's what this universe is. It's infinite reality. We are an aspect of infinite reality. Total freedom with the power to believe that we're not. There's nothing really at all to worry about at all, ever. Worry is a thought based in time, based in a future, which doesn't exist. What you really suffer, as I was telling Julie, talking to Julie. Hi, sir. Speaking to Julie about worry. And we explained to Julie, do you know it's impossible to worry about the future? It's impossible to worry about something that doesn't exist because it doesn't actually exist in order for you to worry about it. So therefore it's impossible to worry about something that doesn't exist because it's not there to worry about. It doesn't exist to worry about. And we said, really, when you look at it, what you are actually worrying about is a thought creation, a manifestation within your own mind, an image perhaps, or a sentence or a catastrophic um, storyline you're running thoughts that's really your source of worry that thought right there not the future it's always in the now one of the, my favorite ones with that is when we did the work with the teenager who had his a-levels coming up oh, yeah. and we kept he was worrying about how he's going to feel going into the exams and and you were like, look, he's like, but that is happening. That is happening. I went, I'm going to do my exam. He was going on and on and on about it. And he said, okay, it's 99.9% sure that's going to happen, but it's not happening now. So you can't be worrying about that. And then because of COVID, he didn't have to sit his exams in the in, no, point, in school. Point one percent. Yeah, he had to do, I think they marked it on their coursework or something like that. But I just thought I'd love to speak to him now because in the at that time he thought, you know, I do need to worry about it because it is going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm doing my A-levels and it is going to happen. And I think we get so certain and fixated on, on things. And it's like, but we don't know. And it doesn't exist, so we can't worry about it. But that was one of my favourite examples because you're like, you really did think, like, this kid's right, you know, he probably is going to do, his, he's going to see his A-levels. And then he totally didn't, like, did not see that coming. Didn't see that one coming. But it's the same for everything. 
we think we, we, we think so many things are certain so even this idea of death we think is certain but we don't even know what it is it's a movement It's funny, we don't know what death is, we also don't know what life is. Everybody's all caught up about death, but they don't even know what life is. And there was that phrase of Jesus when he said, tell us about our end. And Jesus' response was, I take it from your question that you asked me about the end that you found the beginning. Blessed is he who takes his place in the beginning, for he'll know the end and won't taste death. Booker Thomas. Life. Life. The livingness of life. That's where the answer lies. The spiritual. What is the spiritual, Dave? Everything. Because it's all one. We're just so caught up in thinking we know something that we no longer experience the magic. I know what this is, I know what that is. This is a tree, that's a rock, that's a mountain, that's a that's a star, that's a moon, it's the earth. Oh, that's that's my daughter, that's my wife, that's my husband. That's my son, that's my mum, that's my dad, that's my dog. We think we know something. We believe. And the moment we believe, we experience it as a reality that looks real. Yet we all have thoughts that we have. Like I have one when I go and stand on a high building. If I look off a high building, I'm like, oh, I can fucking jump. I can jump now. Uh, no. And we often speak about our mad thoughts, don't we? Like, like it's, every, I said to Dave, I can't carry this here around saying to me because I'm terrified I'm a dropper because the floor yeah. seems really hard. And I'm like, I don't think I will, but I keep thinking maybe I'll forget I'm holding and I'll just drop her. I mean, I have so many mad thoughts you do. that I don't act on. I think I probably only get to hear like 3% of them. There's no point in even talking about them. <laughs> it's pointless. They're just the thoughts. Like, I don't know, I was thinking the other day, I was crossing a bridge and there was a kid coming towards me and I remembered a thought I once had, don't throw that kid off the bridge. This little kid's walking towards me with his mum. Don't throw that kid off the bridge, Dave. Whatever you do, don't throw that kid off the bridge. And I, I shut my eyes and I walked past them. And then I stopped and I turned around. Thank God they're still there. Oh, thank God. I didn't do it. We're all bonkers. We're all mental. Nobody wants to talk about their illegal thoughts, their immoral thoughts. Nobody wants to talk about their dark thoughts. I've got thoughts I don't tell people for fear of social isolation. I remember once we did a, a four day with a teenager and we were kind of asking, we did ask her like, what is it? Cause she'd been in the system, like the psychiatric system since she was seven and attempted suicide and been hospitalized and all kinds of things self-harm 
And she started telling us some of the thoughts that she'd had from quite a young age. And I think they terrified her. And then Dave started telling us some of the thoughts he's had in his life. And she said it suddenly, these things that had tormented her and thought it made her such a bad person, she saw them as thought rather than her. And that was something that then started to, to shift things for her. And she started to sort of come out of this state that she'd been in for over half her life. Hmm. I but remember it, she burst into tears at that point, didn't she? Yeah. And we said to her, right, break time, took her out into the garden and said, why are you crying? She said, I'm crying for two reasons. One, I can't believe how much time I've spent in the system telling people about my thoughts. She said, and another reason I'm crying is because I think I've just realised I'm OK. The problem was she's telling people about those thoughts and they were telling how awful those thoughts were and There's something where they come from. And what's it? Yeah. And she was terrified of them. And we were and like, you were kind of just laughing at them. Like, oh, that's nothing compared to what I think. And he started to ask, oh, my God, we've got this 15 year old. You're telling all this stuff. And I was like, I suppose she's kind of had those. But your stuff is kind of up the ante on some of them. <laughs> And she just started laughing and it was just so nice to see someone suddenly not take their darkest thoughts so seriously. We once, when we once did a, an online um, retreat kind of thing. And this lady, I was speaking about some of my dark thoughts and they got this email off this lady saying, I want a refund. Was it day one? Yeah. It's day one. Well, but I want, she was watching it in catch up in right. a different country. That's right. I want a refund. I think we charged £99 or something for the for the retreat. I want a refund. Well, I, I didn't sign up to have blithe references to child trafficking, child exploitation, this, that, and the other. Uh, this isn't what I thought it would be. This isn't what I signed up for my money back. So we promptly paid her back her money. And then I sent her an email back saying, the reason why I speak about some of the dark thoughts that have occurred to me in my mind is so that people can start to get a sense of we all have them. They occur within the mind of everybody. They might not be those thoughts, but they have their own. And I explained within this story of some of these things that had happened to me, how I really noticed the difference, how my life had changed, because at one point, those thoughts would have totally had me, I'd have stressed out about them, I'd have been like, who the hell am I? What does that mean about me? And then all of a sudden, I was laughing at them, thinking to myself, that's just ridiculous. The only thing that had shifted was my consciousness. My awareness to the logic of life. And then all of a sudden we get an email back saying, thank you for clarifying that. I totally understand. Please accept my apologies. I'm going to continue to watch. And here, here's your money back. And she gave us back the money and a donation. And then she started to speak to us about her own experiences of that. And I said, people don't want to talk about their dark thoughts. People want to pretend that they don't exist. So they put them in this little dark corner, shine a fucking light on them. Shine a light on them and you'll see they have no power. Speak about it. I'm not saying you have to go around and tell everybody your deepest, darkest secrets, but let's not hide. Let's not pretend that these dark thoughts don't exist and worry and stress about them. They have no power. There's nothing to worry and stress about them for. Their thoughts. That that creates the suicide thought creates the what flavor yogurt do I want? Like Julie's beach, go back to the ocean and the waves. It's all the same thing. It's all one. Separation never once took place between anything, between anyone, between time, between distance. Separation never took place, ever. Everything is one. The only place separation appears to exist is within our mind, our ego, me, 
separate me. Who are you? What is this meanness? You're not your thoughts. They come and go. They're fleeting. You're not your past. It doesn't exist. You're also not a bunch of memories because you exist now. You're not the future. It doesn't exist. What are you? What am I? What are all things? That only you can discover. Mother's just started snoring. What was that one again? That's what this conversation's about. Anything you think that this conversation about is about, you've got to let it go. Because it will hold you prisoner to an idea. This conversation isn't about getting anything. You're already it. Pretending you're not. Everybody's already it. Everything is already it. It's an illusion of separation and realities. And to quote Theodore Nottingham, it's the magical expression of our own consciousness. That's what our reality is, the magical expression of our own. Pardon? Magical, sorry, Jenny, you're so good. The magical display of your own consciousness. That's what reality is. The magical display of your own consciousness. That's why everybody sees a different reality. Everybody on earth sees a totally different reality. They all like different things. They all support different political movements. They all have their own biases. That's why arguments take place on this planet, because people see different realities. That's why some people puzzle the shit out of us, out of, out of us, even our most close people. Some of whom, like brothers and sisters, were genetically from the same breeding stock. Reality is the magical display of our own consciousness. We're all aspects of the one. And thy will be done. You do whatever you wish. You always have. You are the creator. You create your reality. You create everything you experience. You dream it. Why is it a dream? Well, it's thought within consciousness. What is a dream state at nighttime? Thought within consciousness. How real does it look? Really, really real. So real you wouldn't question it. Until you wake up and go, oh shit, that was a dream. Thank God. Oh, damn. Well, you can wake up whilst awake and realise it's all a divine thought. See you. See you, Huey, man. And we're creating whatever experience we are in. We are creating that reality. All the time. Always have done. Can't escape it.
Well, so you, I wasn't sure if you were saying bye or you wanted to ask a question. Oh. oh sorry. Bye. Thank okay, you. Well, let's have a break. Should I break? Yeah. A 10 minute break. We'll come back in 10 minutes. So quick um, thing, we're doing a retreat in Devon on the 17th to 21st of November. 17th to 21st of November. We've got a few spaces left. Uh, anybody interested, get in touch. It's it's in a house. Breakfast and dinners included. There'll be some yoga and meditation from a lady called Naomi. Not yoga. Okay, no, what, 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 swim, what, what, swimming. Open what swimming. Sorry, my apologies. I'm still on the last one. And so, yeah, it's a four-day event. If anybody's interested, get in touch. So, and we're also doing our um, mentorship program, which is a year-long thing. So if anybody's interested, that includes two retreats. Um, we've got guest speakers from America and, and well, other people around the world. Um, so if anybody's interested, get in touch with us about that as well. So we're recording, aren't we? Do you want to <laughs> take it to bed? Yeah, take it, leave a second. And then, so. Is it nearly bedtime? Does anybody have any questions? She's the cutest little thing. I know, so I was going to ask, Dan, I don't know if you, you'll share the story you told us about when you're putting Ellery to bed. That cracks me up when I think about it. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. It kind of fits into what um, she's been talking about with the the different parenting styles. Um, but the a couple of weeks ago, we, at my daughter, Ellery, she's, she's now um, just over two years old and she's... She's not a terrible two-year-old, but she's definitely started that stage. Um, and all of a sudden, she didn't want to go to bed. So when we started putting her in bed, she's shouting, no bed. But how she's saying it, it, it she's when she's shouting, it sounds, no bed, no bed. So she's basically calling me a no bed. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's that's uh, somewhat funny. That's been recently happening in my house. And Jen just saying, I love that story. <laughs> yeah, I loved it when you told us that. <laughs> right, let's go a question. Anybody got any questions they want to ask? Has anybody got any comments? Anybody got any, well, how does this fit into this? How does this fit into that? What about this? What about that? Or... Is anybody realising stuff? Is there any realisations going on? Is it making sense for people? Is it starting to, you know, because this isn't an intellectual pursuit. Getting that message across is so difficult because people think, oh, there really must be something I should, yeah, there really must be something I must be doing. Tell us how to do it. It's not a case of how to do it. It really isn't. It's a case of realising we're already it. There's nothing to do. Can I ask something? Deb, yeah, of course you can, love. Yeah. No, it's Deb I know from Tickham Centre. Is it Deb from Tickham? From years ago. From years oh, ago. Gosh, it just went. We as the person. Deb, you're breaking up. Yes, so yes, what? yes. Jenny, yes, it is. Yes, oh. yes. Are you Deb? From years ago. Deb, from um, years ago. Yes, from years ago. From years ago. I'm still here, but I still don't get it. Can you hear me? Yeah, just what I heard was it's dead from years ago and I still don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> I said I'm still here. What I wanted to ask you was um, to us as the personal people that we think we are, these little separate people, have any power over this divine space dream? 
Totally. We do. We're creating it. But why aren't we creating something better then? Because we don't know. Because we don't know better. So you do you just create whatever you want? I create whatever I'm creating. Right. As in, it's not our choice. It's not our choice what we're creating. Well, there you've separated yourself from the whole. Right. Okay. Because so something's creating it. And if you're yes. saying, well, I'm not creating it, then you separated yourself from the thing that's creating it. That's the ego. That's the tricky little trickster. Mm -hmm. It's a victim. Doesn't exist. Right. It doesn't exist. You can't change anything from the ego stance. No, absolutely not. Right. Okay. Because the ego has no power. Yes. Because it's not real. It's good. I've got that bit. Right. So what was the other bit? That it's all being created. You said I'm creating it. But then you said the little person can't create it. Sorry. So I'm lost. You are again. it. The point you are, is, you are it. You are it. You're not the little person. Okay. Are you Jewish? You drop into you are that's it. The it's illusion. such an amazing feeling. So that's the illusion that we don't realise we're it. You're Jewish, are you, Deb? Yes. Here comes out my, Jew my practically only bit of Jewish knowledge. <laughs> Apart from, I'm just probably completely wrong. I haven't got Jenny sat next to me to correct me. Apart from, I learned never tell Orthodox Jewish ladies that religion is not God. Don't do that. Um, in Judaism, they say there is a spark of Hashem within everyone. Okay, Hashem, the overarching reality it's called by many other names and where in the world people come from what language they speak what means of awakening they follow because all religion is really is a is hopefully a guide to help people awaken to the god within themselves that's what it was always all about <clears throat> that's all Jesus spoke about. It's what Buddha spoke about. It's what uh, Abraham spoke about. They spoke about the divine state. The divine state exists within all people. It's life itself. It is a divine, magical thing. What is life? What is life? Take some time to contemplate that question. People go, oh, life's this, life's a bitch, life's this, life's that. No, 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 no. That, that, don't confuse life for what's being created. Don't confuse life for how it appears. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what is life? What is this spark of existence? What's this spark of infinite potential? Do you mean this animating energy? What's that? Yes. What's that? Mm. Yeah. Because that doesn't go anywhere. That's the big you. The little you is what the big you mistakens itself for, like the ocean behind Julie. I don't know if everybody can see Julie. It depends what you're watching on. But behind Julie, she's got this ongoing... She lives on a desert island. It's like, but that's the, we are the equivalent of the ocean suddenly going, shit, I'm just a wave. Friggin' hell, I'm that wave. Oh, friggin' hell, but now I'm that wave as well. Oh, and I'm that wave. Getting caught up in the waves. But one, one has to fall into that realization that we're the ocean. Well, it makes no difference whether they do or they don't. Okay, because you just are. Because you we all are. are. 
because we all just are, whether we like it or not, believe it or not, see it or not, it doesn't matter. We are all that. Mm -hmm. There is only that taking place. That's the true reality. That's why when people people will say truth will set you free, they're not my truth or your truth or when we finally hear the truth. It's it's the truth of what and who and what we truly are. And that is an experience that will shatter somebody's concept of life. It will destroy the ego in a moment. It will just evaporate. It doesn't mean you won't have ego. You'll continue to create. You'll have your little quirks and your little neurotic little behaviours and mad, mad as fuck thoughts. You'll have all that. But you'll just be this awareness. You're this awareness that doesn't take all that quite as seriously. It doesn't mean you have your ups and downs. You have your ups and downs. And that's what people call God, that awareness. That's what people are talking about. That's it. Which isn't judging us. Go Look, beyond that. I'm in the 10 days of judgment. This is in Judaism. This is where we are now. Jewish New Year. 10 days of judgment. So how do you understand that? That's not happening then. I've had this conversation with a few Jewish people. Mm, it's confusing. My experience of God is pure, unconditional love. Like that. And when I say those words, that's not it. No. It, it's those don't scratch the surface there are no words to describe it there is no judgment the only thing that judges us is our ego <laughs> god doesn't judge god is pure love it says so it says so in so in the torah god is love there is no judgment in love love is just total acceptance Total, there's only, see you beautiful. Um, sorry, I don't want to hog all the space. But no, no, it's just, cool. It's cool. Just, Sid, Sidney Banks said, like, there is um, a consequence. Like, you're responsible for your action or something along those lines. Totally. You're responsible for your actions. So that in, So I suppose it's something to do with that. I don't really understand that, though. What like, because if it's just all love, why why can't we just do anything? Who cares? But it, it it seems to suggest that there is kind of some consequence and some, if you want to call it judgment or call it something a bit nicer. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's an absolute consequence. Right. You live in the experience of whatever you're dreaming. Hmm. That's your punishment. Heaven and hell oh. are heaven and hell are places you go to after you die. They're states of being now. Right. The wise have always said, forgiven you got heaven. Of course you do. The moment you forgive, you know, any grudge we hold doesn't hurt the other person. It hurts the person who holds it, like that old saying, to hold a grudge is like drinking poison then expecting the other person to die. It's us that suffers. The moment you forgive, you're actually letting yourself off the hook. Mm. People don't think like right. that. They think that they must hold on to the grudge in order to punish the other person. I learned that the really hard way. I learned everything the hard way. I was born into this world, breach, ass first. I've gone through this world, ass first. I learned everything the hard way. I remember we've spoken about this story before, but we're working in a township and second day back. And there was we were just surrounded by, in South Africa, we were just surrounded by black people, Jenny and I, and a lady called Jill. And... Second day back, I asked, has anybody seen anything? And this girl was getting nudged by her friends. And this is probably one of my favourite stories of forgiveness. So a few people on the screen will have heard this before, but I said to her, they were, she was going, no, no, I don't, I don't want to say. I don't want to say, I don't want to say. Not in front of 26 people. I don't, I don't want to say anything. So I said, no, leave her, leave her alone, but you, you have to tell me at lunchtime. She was like, all right. So at lunchtime, we went out and she said, a few days ago, my neighbour came round 
and she stayed for a bit. She had a drink, and when she left, I noticed my mobile phone was missing. She said, so with that, I went straight round her house and knocked on the door. She opened, I shouted at her, I pushed her. Through came her husband. She said, I pushed him, I pushed him, I pushed him. I shouted obscenities at him. I screamed in his face. I wanted him to beat me because I knew they'd taken my phone. She said, and I pushed him out the way and I went through in the other room and there was her brother fixing my mobile phone, which I hadn't broken. They'd broken my phone. They wouldn't give me my phone. So I left. And she came through and she, a few days, she said, and this was a few days ago, she said, and yesterday I came to your course and it made no sense to me at all. It made no sense. She said, but when I went home, I sat down on my sofa and she said, and I suddenly found myself get up and walk mm -hmm. down and knock on the door. I haven't checked the others. It was that one I did pretty much lift off and carry all the way home. And she said, the lady opened the door and she said, I apologised to her. I said, I apologised to her for how I'd spoken to her. She said, I should not have spoken to you like that. And she said, she said with that, her husband came through and she said, I apologised to her husband. She said, I wanted him to beat me. She said, I wanted him to beat me so I could go to the police and he would, they would have to take it seriously. She said, I really poked him and pushed him. She didn't apologise to him. And she said, and I apologise to her brother as well. And she said, we are neighbours. I will need you and you will need me. She said, but I will take back my mobile phone now. And she said, and they went and got me my phone and they gave me. And she said, I'm going to fix this. I want to forget this even happened. And I looked at this woman and I said, what? So you forget? You forget? This was blowing my mind. I'm like, so you forgave somebody who stole your mobile phone? I said, do you not feel like you've mugged yourself? She said, no, Dave. The weight of my, the weight of the world has come off my shoulders. She set herself free. She entered into the kingdom. She raised her level of consciousness. Simply by letting go of the animosity. And that was such a beautiful story. I was blown away. And then I walked out and we were having some mealy pop and stuff that they were there. And one of the ladies of our first course six months earlier came walking past her. She was crying her eyes out and I stopped her. I said, are you all right? And she went, no. I said, why? What's going on? She said, I've just found out my brother-in-law has been shot dead. I said, what the hell's happened there? Why is that? She said, he's a taxi driver, pulled up at the wrong taxi rank. Somebody put the gun through the window and shot him in the head. Cape Town, South Africa. And it was then that this story, I remember this story just suddenly becoming magnified. You know, in townships, they, they will burn down houses. Some people will burn down other people's houses. And people will put a gun through the window of a taxi driver that pulls up at the wrong taxi rank. And I remember thinking to myself, that lady has killed that timeline dead. That act of forgiveness killed the timeline of revenge attack. She didn't have to sleep with a knife underneath a pillow. She didn't have to contemplate and spend her earthbound existence contemplating how she was going to get some get back at this person, what she was going to do in revenge, and then what retaliation thing she had to defend herself from following that. She killed suffering simply by forgiving. And she also became a very powerful person that got what she wanted in the end as well. She got a phone back. So heaven and hell are states we live in in the now. That's our punishment. And we are judge, juror and executioner. You know, nobody else is, is doing it for us. 
I can't blame anybody for my actions in my past. And I've done some pretty shit things that I would love to be a palm off onto other people. I can't. They're just excuses. It's the ultimate in taking responsibility for ourselves, Sid's right. Because it's our reality, our dream, our lostness. Can I ask a question? Sir? What, what I'm noticing is that it's like the magnet, if I've met all it's like, it's always to go towards the story and want to share the story rather than in the direction of, because we're all of it in my experience, but like rather than in the direction of the bigamy or it's always like, it's like I have to force down, not, I want to tell the stories of what's not going right or what's, you know, why is that so strong? Habit. We live in a miserable as fuck culture. EastEnders has been one of our favourite television programmes. <laughs> What's wrong with us? I've never, I've never got on with that programme. It's just habit. It's a level of consciousness. You know, for so, it's just as easy for consciousness. In fact, it's easier for consciousness to create beauty than it is to create suffering. Because it is beauty. It's just as easy for consciousness to create joy as it is to create unhappiness. It's just habit. Mm. It's just beliefs. We believe shit things. We're going to experience it as a reality. Our reality, the whole of reality is created from thought. Beliefs are thoughts that we don't see as being thoughts. We see them as being truths unquestionable truths many people don't dare question their beliefs for fear that they'll get eternal damnation but they won't because it doesn't work like that i suppose for me it just feels like like last night it like was just with I, I feel like I, I don't know I'm just trying to be with everything with just the way it is you know it's okay if I'm I'm all of it like we all are you know and I'm just trying to be with it but then I suppose it's just it's always back to that I want to be a different state <laughs> you know I don't want to feel really sad <laughs> you know so it's like when I'm in that it's like it's, like, it's that I don't know I just I don't want to oh. accept I get you. I want to be somewhere else. I want to feel something different. I get you. Because we all do that. But it's not the state that's causing our suffering. It's our judgment upon it. This is how I want reality to look. Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. It doesn't look like that. 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 Fuck, that's wrong. There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. Something because it should look like this. It should look like this. No, that's a thought. That's a belief. We think we're suffering that. Yeah. Suffering this. Yeah, yeah. Everything's 180 degrees in the opposite direction when you boil it down. The moment we blame anything for our suffering, we're in we're into lostness, even if we're blaming a thought. Yeah. Thoughts in and of themselves have no power. When I talk about the power of thought, I'm talking about the ocean. I'm not talking about thinking. Thought creates reality, like thought, like the ocean creates waves. When I talk about thought, I'm not talking about thinking. Thinking's too late. It's the created. It's the energy of consciousness taken form as an experience, as an idea, as a phrase, as an image. 
Reality is the magical display of our own consciousness. 7.7 billion magical displays of our own consciousness all over the face of planet Earth. Each person believes that what they see is real and true. So there's 7.7 billion human versions. Just humans, that's not even looking at the plants, the animals, the fungal kingdom, the bio, the bacterial realm. The beings that we have no comprehension of because they don't exist in this dimension. They don't exist in this vibratory state, in this frequency. Infinity. What we're learning to do, it's the most, when you start to see it, you realize it's the most basic of things. And it is literally only a beginning. What we're talking about is only a beginning. We're just starting to question reality. Is it happening to me or is it happening through me? Is it happening because I'm here? Or would it be taking place without me here? Well, if you weren't there, you wouldn't be there to experience it. Therefore, you wouldn't have a reality your reality but you are here and where did you come from i'm going to break into cotton eye joe in a moment <laughs> where do we come from jesus asked that question in the book of thomas where do we come from you come from the light you're going towards the light. You are the light. It's exactly the same statement as I take it from your question that you asked me about the end that you found the beginning. It's exactly the same statement. Blessed is he who takes his place in the beginning, for I'll know the end. The now, the alpha and the omega. The now. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The now. Beginning and the end. The now. All that exists. It's been pointed to for thousands of years. And it's still true to this day. And it will always be true. Because it's all that's real. This isn't an intellectual pursuit. The intellect is the domain of the ego. The intellect is a tool, a really useful one. It's great. But it's always too late. It's always too late. That's why... People who meditate are always trying to quieten the intellect down because they know fine well the answer doesn't lie in the intellect. The, the intellect is everything we've already thought. It's like, a, it's like our library of books that have already been written. If the answer lay in that, we'd already know. 
the intellect can't think anything new. But you can. Insight's given. It's received. It's not something you can pull out of the air like your name or the answer to what's two plus two. What's your flavor, favorite flavor or anything like that? It's not, you can't pull it out like that. Where do you live? You can't pull in, in, um, can't pull revelations out of the out of the air like that but you do at some point now the intellect can't get its head around that well if i can't do it but i do we have to we have to stop looking at things from a newtonian point of view we're all just a bunch of marbles and shit We have to start looking at the quantum. And anybody who has a quick glimpse into quantum physics just gets remotely interested and looks at a few videos will go, fuck me, that's mental. Yeah, we are, we're mental. And I don't mean mental as in psychopathic. I mean, it doesn't make sense to the intellect. How can it be true that I can't generate an insight yet I create it? I remember listening to a man who talked about near-death experience. His name's Dr. Bruce Grayson, a fantastic, interesting man. Dr. Bruce Grayson, highly recommend listening to him. Talking about near-death experience. And he spoke about how in, in the Western culture, we are brought up with Plato's ideas. And one of Plato's ideas was you, you prove something to be true or false. And he said, that's a twofold way of seeing the world. Twofold. True, false. He said, but other cultures don't grow up with that. They grow up with a fourfold way other, under some other name. I must look this up. It begins with B. And it's a fourfold system. And that fourfold system goes like this. Something can be true and something can be false. Something can be neither true nor false. And something can be true and false at the same time. They've grown up with that for thousands of years. Now, if you look at quantum physics, that's more in alignment with quantum physics. We still look at things through the true or false paradigm we must go bigger than the true or false paradigm and start to incorporate infinity all possibilities exist quantum physics states that scientists know that but they also know it's a oneness and they call that the unified field unified field the singular field from which all things emerge that's god that's hashem that's allah whatever anybody wants to call it Scientists call it the unified field. It's exactly the same thing. It's a fact. God, Allah, Hashem, Jehovah, the unified field, Buddha, Buddha mind. It's a fact, but they're just words. The object, the, the true reality is true. It's a true reality. It's the true reality. And we are all that true reality because it created every single one of us out of itself. We created ourselves out of it. But we are it. We're magic. And we're perfect. We always have been. We're beautiful. Doesn't matter what the hell we look like. Doesn't matter how we feel. That's a judgment. It doesn't judge. It has nothing to judge itself or compare itself to.
because it is all things, all at once. And it's pure and conditionally loving. It's the only way this it's the only way that in a, a down to earth practical living life on a planet with what appears to be separate beings that this world's going to change is when we stop separating ourselves and seeing difference and we start to realize we're all a divine creation but first we must see it within ourselves because the moment you see it with for yourself it makes no sense to even consider the opposite. Because once you know, you will never forget. You will always come back to it, even if you get lost. Because it's real. You are real. Not your story. That's not real. It's a bunch of memories of a perspective that took place in that moment. You could have 10 people looking at that same thing. You have 10 different realities about it. So you, why is yours more real than anybody else's? No, it's all an illusion. All that's in the realm of illusion. My reality, my life is an illusion. What I call my life, the fact of life isn't. The livingness of life isn't. That's real. It's eternal and it's eternally creative. We think it has to be more complicated because we've got microscopes and satellites and we're always trying to manipulate the world. But that is why people have told us to look within. Stop looking out, start to look within. What's looking within? It's starting to contemplate existence. You're starting to see how it worked. You're starting to see the illusions that we take for granted as being fact. Time, separation, personalities, psychological illnesses. It's all in the realm of illusion. Fear. It's in the realm of illusion. And everything that fear brings about, anger, hostilities, jealousy, envy, greed, those deadly sin things. Why are they deadly? They will kill your joy of life. Comparison. My sister says comparison, she probably read it somewhere. Well, I heard it from her. Comparison is the thief of all joy. And she also said to me, you can lead a man to wisdom, but you can't make him think. We have to do it for ourselves. 
and we're all there, we're all capable, because we're all already it. People think that their freedom exists when they stop feeling certain feelings. That believes the prison. Because it will take this now of discomfort or any now of discomfort and it will make it look completely wrong. And we will suffer that. This isn't about not feeling. This is about embracing all feelings. Understanding these aren't human feelings. These are nature feelings. We all lost Dave. <laughs> I was going to say, take it away, Julie. You've gone <laughs> to the main screen. You're taking over the session now. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> I reckon it's night night time, don't you? I was about to fall asleep anyway. <laughs> well, I think that was in, like, insane tonight. You know, sometimes when you hear the principles, sometimes you you can listen to them and and they can affect you in a certain way. And then other times you can really listen to them and they just resonate so strongly with you that it just feels like clear as a bell. Mm. And it's it kind of like, I mean, I love that. I've been listening to Elsie recently where you know, how she's so in the feeling of the principles. And I think that Dave's, Dave and Jen tonight have put that across so amazingly well. Like, I don't know if it's just how I'm listening right now. I'd agree. It sounded really beautiful tonight. Yeah. I just, sometimes it hits differently, doesn't it? I mean, I don't know if that, I mean, I've been around a lot of like new beginner, like beginners at my Buddhist group and, and I've been doing a lot of listening. I just don't, maybe I've, my listening skills have changed slightly because I've just been like, you know, been having to listen a lot. But was it that? Or do you think that it, like tonight it's just seemed really strong? Jenny started it strong, didn't she? Like, like you say, just really. Just being in the Because I haven't heard Jenny talk for quite a while like that. And that was really beautiful, I thought. Yeah. I was trying to do some work to begin with. And then I was like, no. <laughs> put it yeah. down it is yeah like sometimes it's just not the time for multitasking is it no sometimes my just i just fell into this sort of really deep place of listening is just insane 
Don't know what's happened to look like it came back on them for a sec. I'm there back. Sorry about that, everyone. It's all right. No idea what I've, my internet crashed. We were chatting. Slagging me off. No, we were just saying like I was just saying I've been having to, I don't know if my listening is different tonight. Like sometimes I can hear the principles and, and they feel great, don't get me wrong, but other times I hear them from such a different place. And when you start saying things about when you say things like, you know, I have a deep understanding of that I am it and I feel that so strongly and it's so nice to be in that feeling. You know, like sometimes that 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 amazing feeling that comes up from hearing the just sometimes how the principles are share how you're sharing the principles. So I'm really grateful for that. It's been pretty much, I don't know if I've listened differently tonight, but I, you know, a couple of times I've just felt that just amazing feeling that the that you know that you can get from this from listening and to insights and people sharing. Or listening yeah. to what you're saying, you know, that real deep feeling of I am it. And that's the bit I love. I don't love the the ego bit. I've got to find a way to get that it bit around the ego bit. I still fall into not liking myself in that bit. But that's saying, well, that's saying that the ego is an obstacle. Yeah, but it's not. It's that saying that, you know, the ego is something to go to war with. No, if you go to war with Isn't anything, that what you were doing earlier, you're creating suffering exactly, and it's like suffering only exists when we go to war in one sense or another. Whether we go to war with another country or a person or a family or culture, or we go to war with our own thoughts or go to war with our own feelings, there's no there's no winner. There's just suffering created. And a, a build up, if we got a war with another country, a build, a build up a resentment. You can't bomb your way to peace. We have to put down the weapons. And that goes for in our own experience as well. We have to wake up and learn and realize there's nothing to be afraid of. No feelings are to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's no such thing as a wrong feeling. It's a perfectly right feeling that we're feeling, whatever we're feeling. It doesn't mean act, behave according to the feeling. Like if I'm feeling angry, it doesn't mean I might feel angry with somebody, I should go and batter them. No, I'm not saying it, it condones behaviour. Going back to what Debs was saying just before, you know, yeah, there are consequences in this realm of existence. You do something, it's going to come with consequences. But we have to take responsibility for our own feeling states. And when you realise there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to feeling states, there's no wrong feeling, there's no wrong thoughts. No wrong thoughts. Not wrong. You might not like them. You might have a judgement about them. You might not want to tell other people about them. I have those thoughts. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting for me that that idea about thoughts, you know, like I know I have some absolutely nuts thoughts. In fact, you know, we had a, a lady on a while ago and I spoke with her privately and I thought, I'll just tell her some of my crazy thoughts because that will make her feel so much better. And we were cracking up by the end of the conversation. But I don't believe those thoughts. Is that why she never came back? Did she tell me? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but I don't believe those thoughts. But why are there some other those that you know some of those other thoughts, the, the egoic thoughts, when I'm when I'm not in a place of really dropping into I know I'm it. Sometimes I can be up in that in that world. A lot of the time I'm not now. Isn't this the fun? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. It Isn't has this to... the fun of life. Yeah. Isn't this what it's all about? To have an experience. Absolutely. To have an experience and to forget everything. Yeah. To forget that we're God. Isn't that what this is all about? Yeah, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to have forgotten that. We're supposed to be getting on with this. <laughs> Just come here to play. We're not here for very long. No, no, we're really not. And then when we, everything that we think is dead important in this incarnation, is all dead important. 
tell yourself that on your deathbed. Fuck, I didn't pay this. I didn't pay my electric bill. Oh, God, I haven't got any income. Oh, God, um, I'm going left the gas on. Uh, no, when you lay in your deathbed, you won't give a shit. You'll just be, and I tell you what, you'll look back at your life and you'll go, friggin' hell, it's coming to an end. Then we have a choice at that point, at this moment now, as to how this looks at the end, because we can either look back at it and go, oh shit, it really is terminal, this existence on this plane. Why did I waste all that time worrying about this and worrying about that? Yeah. Why did I not do all the things I truly wanted to do? Or we can look back and go, I had such a full life. I guarantee you one thing though, you won't be dead proud of all the money in the bank. The things that will be valuable to you on your deathbed are all the times you spent in love. All your happy times, all your joyful experiences, all your beautiful memories. They are the things that you, you will carry. And that's why this is all, surely this is all about creating those as best as we can now. So that when we get to the end, we can look back and we can go, that was awesome. That was fantastic. I look forward to that again. <laughs> we need to stop running around, try to change the world. The world's fine. What we need to do is wake up. That will have a direct, direct, absolutely direct response from the world it will come with its consequences to the world and they'll be beautiful everybody on this world suddenly woke up tomorrow morning apparently it's not even everybody on this world apparently it's a very small percentage 10% will be catastrophic in a good way. Apparently. Some say 1%. I don't know. But say everybody woke up tomorrow morning and realized that they were literally creating their own experience of life through their own consciousness and dreaming it all using the power of thought. And up until that moment, they'd been really, really clumsy and not known that. So they'd lived in a dream that looked like it was outside of them. But in actual fact, it wasn't. It was inside of them all along and they were dreaming it, but they just didn't know it. But they woke up to that fact. This world would change in a moment. Every single war would come to an end. The world would fall in love with each other. We'd fall in love with everybody we'd start to have tolerance for other people's beliefs. We start to get curious about people, not fear them. We'd want to help people, not beat them down. And every single person who's on this screen and has been and, and every other screen on the planet that's looking in this direction through their own, whichever way they're doing it, doesn't matter. So long as they're pointing and guiding and realizing within themselves love, they're helping to create this world. And I tell you what, this is the way the world's truly going. It's not really going to hell. There's nothing more powerful than true reality, love. The illusion has to collapse because it's an illusion. It cannot possibly have more reality than truth or more power. That's why love is the most powerful force in the universe, because you align yourself and you fall into that state of love and acceptance for yourself. You fall into alignment with the flow of life. And you let go. But you don't disappear. You don't evaporate. You just live and you just, you just look after. Because you th realize the thing that you think was possibly going to hurt you was actually your own mind. 
It's evidence for this all through history. Look at Viktor Frankl. Most beautiful time of my life. And he wrote about the concentration camps. There's nothing outside that creates an experience. It's not the way it works. Your magical display of your own consciousness is your reality, and you are the magical display. You are the magic consciousness, sorry. The spirit, the breath of life. Why Buddhists say don't harm, cause harm to any other living being, because really you're harming yourself. You are bringing the level of consciousness, the frequency of consciousness down on the planet. And the lower we sink in consciousness, the more division there is, the more separation, the more duality we experience, the more fear is created. That's why this isn't an intellectual pursuit. It's about if you raise in consciousness, you leave the old behind. It'll still exist. It still exists on that plane of reality. But you move out of it into a new plane of reality. With every single insight you have, every little revelation you have. And Kel, I've watched you do that. I've watched you elevate your way out of the hellhole when I first met you. Mm. And what did you do? Not a lot. Not a lot. I went in. And that means? I don't know. Just something, just, just, just like a bloop. It's just, it's just a metaphoric statement for seeing how it works. Mm. And it feels so, so good in the body, like my mental, ex my mental experience over a period of time was that I felt it so strongly in my nervous system that it was, I didn't know which way up it was all going. But they were just signposts. I didn't want to hang around there too long. And somehow something about how you guys share the principles just sort of touched that place in me that I went from thinking about them in an intellectual way to really having a feeling about them, which I can't really put into words. No, neither. It just feels bloody great. But it's nice. The other nice thing about all this is I haven't got a fucking clue what I'm going to say. That's what's so great, Dave, though, because you can but tell I, that that's what comes out. The feeling comes out when you speak. But I can't take any credit for it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's got nothing to do with me, Dave. It's not me. I can't take credit for it. I don't take any credit for it. I'm grateful for it because as I speak, I learn as well. I say things and I'm like, wow, look at that, that's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind it's of not... learning out loud. Yeah. Thriving, so out, thriving out loud. Yeah, and I'm grateful for this conversation. Yeah. I'm grateful for you lot. But it touches a place. It's not about what you're, the words that you're using. It's the, the, for, for me, it's like, yeah, the words are great, but it's the feeling that that gives me yeah. that I just really appreciate. It's the recognition of yourself. Yeah. That feeling of magic is just starting to scratch the surface of yourself. Mm. It's like dipping the toe in the ocean. But it's a warm ocean. Mm. That's just like my. I feel like 
the connections I have with people that are just about an energetic between two people seem um, so nourishing and the place that I kind of feel comfortable going that feels like the right direction it just feels right we know it just leaves me sort of speechless like it's like oh, my heart feels so full cool appreciate it be grateful for it yeah. and like I say my heart's full because of you lot we do exist in a dualistic realm. It's an illusory realm. Which makes it all the more exciting. It's always just there as well. It's just a, like when you said that story of the looking at the neighbor's grass. I don't know if you said it actually. No, I don't remember that. You look at the neighbor's grass, it looks greener because it is actually greener because of the light. Just got to move slightly to just that pla that home place is just a just a thought away. It can just be there all the time if you let it. Everything's perfect. That's not a judgment. It just cannot possibly be any other way. No. Does it mean it's right? Does it mean it's wrong? It just is what it is. Right, everyone. Don't forget about the retreat. If you can make it, it'd be wonderful, anybody. And anybody watching afterwards on the replay, if we've got it out in time, knowing us, because we back these things up and then general release and load at six months, every six months or so. We need to get our shit together. We just have too much fun. Um, yeah, we're coming up in November. Really looking forward to it. We've also got an online retreat as well coming up, but I haven't got my diary here to tell me when that was. Um, I feel like Julie's just about to tell me. I think it's the 5th, the 5th of November. <laughs> Thanks, Julie, <love. laughs> Julie's like my second brain, <laughs> but my second brain's far better than my first one. I love you, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Probably around the 5th of November then. Uh, yeah, an online retreat. That's via donation. We want, just want that to be accessible to anybody. And if people can't afford to pay, as per usual, we just say, if you can't afford to donate, then please pay it forward with an act of kindness. And go above and beyond. Like really make some effort to make somebody's day. Maybe somebody you don't even know. Maybe really surprise somebody. Just be loving. Yeah, cool. Sales bit of. Um, anybody want to say anything? I, th I thought Ali was going to speak then. Are you going to say something, Ali? 
I hadn't planned to. I was, I, I was, um, no, I haven't planned to, as you can tell, I'm completely incoherent. <laughs> um, but I really like listening to what you said about dropping into the feeling. And you're absolutely right. It kind of takes you to a different place when you listen to this stuff. So a huge thank you, Dave. Oh, no, you're welcome. But like I say, it's just my time. I enjoy it. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. Thank you all for making this even worth doing. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Monday next week. Not doing Thursday. We'll go back to Monday again. It's just because we're doing our mass migration. On Monday night, 7 p.m. Cool. If you know of anybody else who might be interested, track them along. Cool. Right. Loads of love. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.